Okay, so today, or this week, we are talking about intellectual wellness. Last week, I posted a video about occupational wellness. This week is intellectual wellness. So, hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Onika. Let's get into intellectual wellness. So first, what is intellectual wellness? It is the desire and ability to increase your knowledge and your skills. So this is a fun one. I Intellectual wellness, I think, is one that I um, have a good balance in. I enjoy trying new things and learning new things. And that's pretty much what intellectual wellness is, is wanting and making the effort to learn new things and try new, try new skills. It's so important for brain development and just wellness because I feel like it builds your confidence also when you're trying something new and trying something fun. And, and even volunteering is something that uh, can help with your intellectual wellness. But in the most basic sense, that is intellectual wellness, increasing your knowledge, increasing your skills um, around any area. It could be anything. So as I mentioned, some ways to improve your intellectual wellness, it can be personal and professional development. So um, intellectual wellness and occupational wellness can, you can kind of help, help these two dimensions of wellness at the same time with professional development. So um, bumping up your skills, I don't know, let's say you're, uh, I'm trying to think of a job everyone knows. I don't know, let's say you're in accounting and you decide to go back to school to get um, your CPA or something like that. You know, that would be helping out your occupational wellness and your intellectual wellness because you're learning and growing in something that you're passionate about. Um, and then obviously personal development, this can take shape in a lot of different ways. Um, so personal development could be just like self-care. Um, so personal or self-development, uh, it could just be learning about yourself, which can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, I think working on your health, so your physical activity and nutrition can fall under personal development. A lot can fall under personal development, but those are some ways to improve intellectual wellness overall. Um, and also just doing things outside of work. So taking a class, doing something that you've always wanted to do that's outside of your work that can fall under the personal development. Um, taking a free class or it could be a paid class online or maybe going to a class to do it or in person I should say in person or virtual just taking a class it could be anything a sewing class um a, a workout class um it could be you know learning how to design a website anything anything like that um volunteer in the community this is such a great way to um well one get involved um, but to just kind of put yourself, it's such a great way to see, um, put yourself in other people's shoes, see how blessed you are to even be able to share your time to help other people. Um, so volunteering, I think, is something if you can um, make the time to do on the weekends. I know a lot of companies, they kind of give some hours for you to go and volunteer if maybe they're volunteering, um, it's just a great way to give back. Um, and again, just learn more about your community, what's going on, go to an area you've never been before. Um, reading is another way to improve intellectual wellness. And it's such an easy way to like learn about history or science or just any topic. There is a book on everything. Um, there probably a book on intellectual wellness. So um, reading is a pretty uh, easy way and potentially cheap way to improve your intellectual wellness, especially if you have a library card. So those are just a few examples of how to improve this particular dimension of wellness. 
Um, so my experience with the wellness wheel. So I mentioned some things just because I think this particular um, dimension is really fun. I enjoy learning new things. I enjoy trying new things. I absolutely love reading. So that is one thing I typically do. I will read self-help books. Um, other books, I've been reading a lot of um, uh, history, um, so nonfiction history books, which has just been amazing because in school I did not like history and now just kind of being able to choose what history uh what part of history I want to read uh is really exciting and I've I've really enjoyed it and it just makes me feel good I'm like oh my gosh I've, I'm learning about something new that I might have not learned if I didn't go ahead and you know uh, grab a book and just read about it. So learning about like other countries, learning about people in the U.S. that have made a difference that I never even heard of before. So um, yeah, so reading, I really am into like personality tests because it just helps bring awareness to myself. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to see myself and how I react to things and how I think. And so I, I really get into that stuff. And so like the Enneagram, I am a type one, but the Enneagram is something that brought a lot of awareness, to like some of my emotions and how I handle it and, um, how I treat other people, how I treat myself. And I'm like, oh my God. So it's like a starting point for me to be able to help me improve. Um, and I also like MBTI. I am pretty sure I'm an ENFJ. So that's been fun, really learning about the cognitive functions. It's been really cool and exciting. Um, and I also just like trying new skills. I have like my bucket list. There's a lot of just basic things on there. Like I want to try an adult gymnastics class and, and try a figure skating and um, I'm always trying new workouts, especially as um, a health coach, just find, finding things to help move my body and finding different activities that I really love. Um, so new experiences is like, I'm telling you, that is what I love. When people are like, what do you like to do? Try new things. That is what I like. So um, yeah, I, I intellectual wellness is uh, there are other dimensions I definitely need some improving on, but I, I do feel really good about intellectual wellness. Um, oop. Oh, there we go. Okay. So speaking of that, let me move myself out the way here. Speaking of that. So obviously I've evaluated my own intellectual wellness because I've been talking about it, but now let's, um, Take some time for you to evaluate your own intellectual wellness. Go through this list and kind of see, are these some of the things that I, um, uh, like, do I pursue stimulating interests or hobbies? If you kind of sit on that statement, you say, no, I don't. And a lot of these statements, if you're saying no, then uh, that is a good um, indicator that, hey, let, let me try something new, even if it's just picking up a new book or um, watching a course on YouTube or something like that, because it's so important for just our, our brains, the development, and just kind of keeping our brains active. It will go such a long way, especially as we get older. Um, I just think about like my parents, I like seeing them being active and and trying new things because that's going to just keep their brain going um so and it's just again like i mentioned before it's just a good feeling to be able to learn it gives you the confidence it helps you kind of look forward to something um in the morning and i think intellectual wellness and spiritual wellness I have my list somewhere of all the wellnesses i get spiritual wellness and the and another wellness mixed up. But um, I think those can go hand to hand, just talking about like your purpose and things like that. So um, take time to evaluate your own intellectual wellness, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I 
can't remember how many more dimensions I have left, but I, as you can see, I am getting through it as I promised I would. Now, I can't say I will be done by the end of this year, but definitely at the beginning of next year, 2024. So, anywho, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!